what's up? I talk to you too much as it is. Yeah, it's probably true. <laughs> what's up? Well, we recorded our, can I say, we recorded our 100th episode the other day. So we, uh, we yeah. did a lot of catching up. We did a lot of catching up. Uh, that check great. that episode out if you want to deep dive me and Dave's um, rambling friendship. Um, as yeah. of right now, I, uh, I'm going to my flip today to, to get that one. I, I got to get that thing wrapped up. It's been like three months. I mean, it's just, we're like a bunch what of loose ends. Turd. I can't believe you're just taking you a whole three months to flip a house. It's still True. better yeah. than 90% of the world. Through COVID-19, yeah. <laughs> and I'm about to close on another one, which is going to be a super, super um, slick deal. Um, and I think I'm, um, I, I think I've turned the corner. I'm going to turn my photography thing into a, into a business, Good. but I gotta, I gotta scale it in a way. I don't want to be doing 150, $200 deal jobs. I need to be, yeah. I need to make worth my time. <laughs> well, I think the idea you have, I don't know if we can talk about it, but the video idea you have could very easily scale past that. Uh, yeah, I locked something in yesterday. Um, we can talk about it. I'm going to try to work with large multifamily syndicators who are when they have a deal under contract and they're trying to solicit for investors, I'm going to try to make video productions for them so they can use it essentially as commercials, yeah. but maybe something a little tailored, you know, like I'm doing one with uh, Matt Faircloth tomorrow or excuse me on Tuesday. And his is going to be a little more informative for people like what's it like to do due diligence on a 323 unit and so we'll make that kind of youtube video but it also like look they're also raising money for it so it's dual purpose but so i think i think there's a good niche in there for me and in that and there's certainly the money right like hey i'll come out for a day i'll do a video you pay me you know whatever a couple grand two three grand god if it helps you raise any money then I'm in there. Oh no, that's, that's a huge value add. And I think it will, because that'll easily help people get over their fear because like investment packages are great, but I I think the easiest way to put it is there are people like you and I, and then there, and uh, well, you you know, I don't know. You might not necessarily fit into the category. I'm going to, so I'm going to say me, there are people like me. And then there are people who really, really, really love spreadsheets and so when you're doing like a syndication, right, and you're doing the investor hub and everything, like I have the, the deal we closed not too long ago had like a 15 or 20 page PowerPoint with like every bit of data and information you could ever want. And obviously, I need to look through that because I need to do my analysis, this, that, that, but I am a guy where you could literally put a picture and a title that says like 18% IRR and I'd be like, awesome. And then like, I don't care to look through 700 Excel doc, like, pieces, right? Like I, I am so you're just not scammed. Is that what you're saying? You're easily sold. <laughs> no, I do. I do the dude. I do the due diligence, but I'm the zone out in a PowerPoint guy. So if you gave me a three minute video that told me everything I wanted to see and know, and it was like an interactive, like, Oh, I can watch this video. I would be a very happy man compared to like hours of spreadsheet data that I'm like, Oh, I got to look through this. Yeah. I'll look through that tomorrow. Uh, so I yeah, think most that's going to be are- huge because syndicators don't do that. Yeah, and yeah, there's not there's not a big market for it. I don't believe there's not that many people doing it. Um, I also think it helps in COVID post COVID nineteen world where um, we can, you know, we can we can get a videographer there instead of maybe having more people that would normally do 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 due diligence. Also, um, it lets you see the property because I got the drone right, and um, you can see the and I'll be able to put the person the sponsor on video, and so like a lot of those things is just trust, right? And so it's like, look, you can see the if you want to know the numbers, you can know the numbers. But if you want to see the person, the property, you can see the person, the property too. So I'm hoping, and I can travel for this. So I'm hoping um, there's something there and I'm, I'm going to sit down and put a, I got to put a new website together and um, I'm actually going to turn this into a business between that kind of thing, the, uh, the due diligence for multifamilies, the events. And then um, I, I have a thing with those, those little uh, lifestyle photo, photo shoots where I tell the blog too, you know, um, yeah. about people, those little, exposés about people. I think there's some high value in there that I've been practicing for years. So anyways, uh, real estate's going okay and it's kind of on easy mode. I need to work a little bit harder than that, but uh, I, this new endeavor is a little bit more, well, it's exciting for me. It's a hobby. More than anything. A hobby that, a hobby uh, that's yeah. paying you. A little bit. Well, I turned down more money. I turned down so much money actually. Yeah. But yeah, it'll work out. Rich. Yeah, <laughs> you rich. No longer broke is a choice. Now it's rich is a choice, or or rich is rich is not an option. I'm stuck. I, I keep working less and I keep getting paid more. No, uh, so what I'm 
Let's talk about your book. That's a, actually what I was about to say is what I'm working on right now. I'm half tempted to share screen is, is an excessive amount of red on a document. Um, I've been joking that it's like, thank God I've been in the Marine Corps long enough to have handed a uh, naval letter format to lieutenants who graduated from the academy because this is about the same amount of red where it's like they're just trying to prove something by just obliterating what you wrote. Um, you know, you, this is like the fifth time you've said this. I, yeah, I don't want to hear it a sixth. I don't want to hear it a sixth, okay? Because I'm like, dude, yeah, but it was like, just people me are supposed to help you by telling no, you No, it's you great. Wrong. I love it. Yeah. yeah well, you keep bringing just, it up so I can feel like there's, I feel like there's an underlying. It's a, it's, a, it's, a weird, it's a weird thing to have, like, be so proud of something and then have it just obliterated. But, like, you know that's what's supposed to happen. You know it's better. But it's like, Wow. Like I knew it was going to be bad, but wow. Um, At least there's something to correct. Yeah. It's, it's actually, it's really, it's been really cool. Um, yeah, if you were she, so bad, she's, awesome. she came over, she's like, I can't fix this. <laughs> <laughs> she's, so she, so she's awesome. Um, and it's funny cause I thought we were going to be cutting a ton of stuff out of the book, but it, as of right now, I'm adding stuff to the first chapter. So, uh, but the hardest mission throughout all of this right now is proving that I like nobody, I have no idea for title. So, um, that's the, the rolling piece and we can, you know, we'll talk about that at, as time goes on. I've got some ideas from people in the group, got some good ideas. Yeah, um, my idea was good. And then stupid David Gutierrez. <laughs> His was pretty good. I like, uh, I like Matt DeBoth. So I wish I could. So for those of you who are listening, I got told that I should name my book, uh, something like get and step you stupid boot. Uh, veterans guide to dd4214 <laughs> of like yeah i would love to name my book something ironic or, or hilarious like that but uh nobody would ever buy it or read it so it would defeat the purpose like no parent would hand that to their kid so um, matt, yeah like i love matt yeah but. i i love i mean i was literally laughing out loud i read it to my roommate and he was like yeah that's it and i'm like well yeah except that i want parents to hand it to their kid is my like demographic like here you're joining the marine corps read this whether you do four years or 40 you'll land on both feet when you exit but uh, yeah you just can't take you can't do anything matt says like he's just <laughs> yeah it's like matt i love you please just keep yeah. these conversations in private you're listening to the military millionaire podcast a show about real estate investing for the working class Stay tuned as we explore ways to help you improve your finances, build wealth through real estate, and become a person that is worth knowing. What's up, military millionaires? I wanted to briefly talk about a service I offer that a whole lot of people don't seem to know about, and I guess that's a failure on my part for not having discussed it enough. So look, finding a realtor that understands investing and or the VA loan or, or both is not always the easiest thing in the world. And finding a lender, same thing. So what I have started doing is I've built a, well, I have a large network, but I've started to compile it all together finally as a legitimate uh, Excel document driven, location driven list for you guys, essentially. So what it, what it is, is basically just my way of helping connect you with a realtor or a lender that I know personally and have vetted and talked to and understand that they're not gonna screw you. And what I do is like, for example, I had a market where I had two or three agents that I all sent the same person as a connection and said, Hey man, you know, I, I trust, I, I know all of these, let me know what you think. And they all said the same agent and same thing. So what I've done is if there's multiple agents in the same market, I choose the best one and that's who I'm going to hook you up with. But the whole point of this is just to help ensure that you get connected to the best agent. So if that is something that you would like, just go to the website, go to from military to millionaire.com slash VA dash realtor slash, or just reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook, whatever, I'll send you the link or you can find it on the resources page of the website. But look, all it is is a way to help connect you with an agent who's gonna hook you up. No, I don't charge a fee for you. No, I don't charge a fee for the agent. It's just a way to hook you guys up. At the end of the day, as a buyer, you're not gonna pay for a realtor anyway. So, ta-da, it's magic. You might as well use one. As far as VA lender, I've got a really good one that I work with and know very well. There's several others that are pretty good, and I'll probably try to steer you away from some uh, companies that I just don't think are very reputable or have been very helpful. So, you know, if this is a service that sounds good to you for free 99, then uh, reach out. And if not, then uh, enjoy the show right now. What's up, 
Military Millionaires, we have done this show talking about the journey from military to millionaire has been like the whole trend. But today we're going to talk to a billion with a B dollar real estate agent about building a brokerage, right? So this, I guess, could be like the military billion. It doesn't have the same ring, but you know, maybe one of these days I'll just change everything to that. Anyway, so Dan Lesniak came and talked to the Veterans REI Live event that we did uh, a month or two ago. And as soon as he was talking, I was texting Alex like, hey, we should, we should probably talk to this guy about getting on the podcast. And uh, here we are. So um, I you know, I have a whole lot more to say. Dan is essentially a billion dollar real estate agent. He's a, he's a best selling author, investor, developer, coach. He's an Ironman athlete. So we kind of have that. He's way better at it, but I enjoy long, enduring, miserable stints on bikes and running. So, uh, he's just a cool guy. And Dan, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm glad to, glad to be on the show and, uh, glad to have connected at the military, uh, REI, am I saying it right? <laughs> Veterans REI Live. Uh, that was that was a fun event. Uh, hopefully next year it'll be uh, live, live in person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is stupid COVID. But uh, Dan, why don't you tell us a little bit about your story? Sure. So I was uh, came up in the Navy, went to the Naval Academy, did did my uh, my tour on submarines, and then uh, got. Uh, Got stationed at the Pentagon for my shore duty and got a, what did I do after that? I got a contracting job, so typical Washington, D.C. defense contractor, mid-sized company, about 500 people. And I uh, thought I would uh, get my MBA, which I did, and then and then go get a big uh, strategy consulting job, which I didn't do. So I, I ended up interviewing for a lot of those, never quite uh, got, got to the the point where they made me an offer 2010, 11, you know, was not a good time to, to be doing that. So I, I asked them like, what do I need to do to get another chance? And they, they said, well, we think you need to develop your sales acumen and, and uh, get better at that part of the, of, of the, uh, you know, job that this will uh, entail and then come back and reapply. So I was buying my, uh, my fifth house at the time, second in the DC area. And I thought, well, I'll, uh, I'll get my license since I'm doing this a lot and, you know, just save money when I invest and help friends and families and maybe develop a little bit of this missing sales skills that they, they said I don't have. And so I started off uh, just very, very small. You know, I decided I'll, I'll focus on the building I live in, see if I can get you know, my own deals plus, uh, whatever, you know, 189, you know, owners in there, you know, however much of that I can. And I ended up getting uh, a lot of that and, uh, actually ended up getting about half of the sales in the building year one. And, uh, you know, a couple months in, I kind of looked up, I saw my pipeline. It was more money than I was going to make, uh, like in the next two or three months than, from real estate than I would the whole year from my, from my day job. So I got out of that uh, contracting job and, and went real estate full time. Never really looked back, never, never reapplied for uh, any of those strategy consulting jobs. And I ended up selling about 22 and a half million or so my, my first year in the business. And then I, I started to hire, started to build the team. I had a small team by uh the start of 2013 and around that time I met Carrie Scholl who was also building a team we we ended up combining our businesses and, and uh, getting married and uh, have, have built a brokerage now that's it's a team model but it's own independent brokerage uh, the Wall Street Journal rankings just came out in real trends we were 13th for the team owned brokerages in that category uh, with about 400 million in sales for, for 2019. I think uh, this year we're on pace to crush that number. We're, we're probably up about 25%. So I think we'll, we'll hit about 500 to 550 uh, million uh, somewhere in there. And um, now we've got multiple businesses, uh, the, the team and, and brokerage. Uh, we have a coaching business as well. We coach agents all over the country, and then we have a development business. We've got about a hundred units in the pipeline in uh, in the D.C. area, condos and townhouses, and you know, some single-family homes. And we've got a couple other joint ventures and things we're working on. And um, 
that's where we are today. Man, it's, uh, sounds easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real estate is so easy. Hey, so let me ask you, um, you got in and you started selling as a regular agent to retail regular buyers. That's how you started, yes? Correct, for the most part, so, yeah. Do you do any of that still? Yeah, um, most of our business is is retail buyers. You most uh, you. You oh no 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 I I um I I don't typically uh I mean you know my role now is strategy uh, recruiting training advising the agents we've got about fifty agents on our team and about thirty thirty five people in supporting roles so we've we've got about you know, 85, 90 people we manage. So Carrie and I are not typically going on the uh, individual like listing appointment, you know. So what was that transition like? Because a lot of people, um, you know, I think the skill sets, well, you, you know better than me, the skill sets are different, right? Can you run a business or can you sell to an individual? And so which one are you bet? Well, I assume you're better at running the business because that's where you gravitated towards. And what was the transition like to go from like, Hey, I'm selling a few houses to now I'm just training people to sell houses. Yeah. So it's, it wasn't, it wasn't all at once and, and no one's going to do it all at, at once. So you're going to kind of move from being the player, then the player coach, and then more the, the coach. Right. And it's, it's uh, you know, so if, if you do it right, and most agents don't, but if you do it right, you should, you should really go out and uh, hire an admin, hire a phone caller first. And we call them inside sales agents because those, those are the people that will take the uh, administrative task off your hands and get you more at bats, right? Because they're going to, you know, if you have an inside sales agent that's compensated a, a base plus a smaller percentage of the closings for the appointments they book, that person's going to get you more of those leads that are like, six months and out because real estate agents are very good at like shooting the gator closest to the boat, like taking that buy now kind of client sell now client, but they're not as good at following up. If it's, if it's someone who's like 90 days out or more, uh, but and that's where like 80% of your leads are. So if you get a lead today, um, you know, 10 to 20% will close in the next three months. The rest are beyond that. So there's more money in those long-term deals, but agents, Agents typically, when they get enough business to go out and make a hire, they don't go out and get an admin for 40K or uh, an inside sales agent for like 25K plus, plus the bonuses. They, they go out and they hire another agent typically because they don't want to pay a, a salary. And so what ends up happening is now you have, uh, you know, two or three agents and you're doing the admin and the, the lead gen and the follow-up for yourself and for them. So now you're doing more of the, you know, lower uh, per, per dollar, whatever kind of work uh, instead of less of it. So uh, you, the first step really is to hire those people that can um, take away the, the admin type of, of work and get you more at bats. And if, and I think that's true of any business, but once, once you do that, you know, then you can go out and get a buyer's agent, a listing agent, and start doing some of your own deals, but giving them, you know, some business. And then it, it just kind of grows over time. And, um, you know, now we're, we're at the point where we've got a, um, a sales manager that actually manages and coaches and trains our agents. We have a, um, we just hired a, someone who's going to be in a president COO type role. Uh, um, and you know, once, once you get to like 50, 60 people, you need more senior level management. So that, that transition really happened over like four or five years and it just, it wasn't all, all at once. So like, you know, two or three years ago, I might've done like 10 to 20 deals a year. Um, now I'm, I'm probably gonna, you know, even, even if they're like a really good client that I've done two or three deals with already, I'm probably going to hand them off to uh, another agent because the, the truth of the matter is that that person is going to give them better service than, than I can right now at this stage. 
Um, and but they still get like, you know, they still get uh, strategy, advice, training, coaching from me if if they need it. Like I'm more available for the most important parts of the transactions. Man, Alex asking all these like gentle. So- I was just going to ask how someone who lived in a tube under the water learned how to talk to people, but um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so, I guess. I would like to kind of backtrack a little bit. And so if I was a brand new real estate agent and I was joining the team, what do you think would be like the, like one or two things that I should focus on first for becoming a decent agent? I think a lot of people get their license and and there's actually like a surprising amount of people who get their license and think like, Oh, I'll just sell to friends and family and that'll be good. And then they're like terrible agents because they just, that's all they did. And they never actually learned anything about being a real estate agent. Um, but like, you know, getting the license doesn't teach you anything. So like, well, I guess we'll just, we'll just say like Alex is about to be a new real estate agent. What would you tell him if he wants to be successful? Yeah, I, th- I think the, the biggest thing is consistency. So there's just a lot of, a lot of people that don't do the work, don't do it long enough. It's, it's not really difficult in the sense of like hard to figure out, like you just have to, you just have to be consistent at it. And like a lot of agents kind of get caught in this chasing the shiny object mode and and they don't, they never do like one particular strategy or, or a tactic or marketing plan long enough to, to let it work. And then they kind of give up and say, yeah, I tried that. It doesn't work and it doesn't work for me or my market or whatever excuse they have. And, um, you know, if, if you really, if you apply yourself for like three to six months, uh, you can definitely hit six figures year one and, and double or triple like that year two. And there, there's not many other industries, none that I know of really, where you can have the kind of success you can have in this, you know, as quickly as you can and with very little uh, barrier to entry. Like it costs you know, a couple thousand dollars at most to get your license and all of that stuff join the association. So like, there's not a lot of capital requirement. You don't have to know a lot of people or you, you don't have to come from a fancy school or anything like that. Or, I mean, it's, it's just very easy to get into and, um, success is, is, is I'm not gonna say like, easy to get but if, if you apply yourself like you you and are consistent uh, for for no more than six months like you'll you'll make it um i think one of the things that a new agent can do to you know dramatically improve their chances of succeeding is to get on a team so and, and make sure it's a good team uh that that provides ample uh training support and leads you know that's a typical typical agent joining us if they're completely brand new they're, they're going to succeed at levels of you know 60 70 percent uh, most of the industry that number is probably 10 to 20 percent so i think um you know on a, on a good team you've got a chance a much better chance of making it yeah i think that having a good culture around you and, and, and I mean the good coaching for sure, but just having other agents around that are hungry. Uh, so I have a friend out here in San Diego who uh, is probably going to listen to this and, you know, call me an asshole, but no, he, he just got, so he, he just got his license three or four months ago. He, you know, the California process for getting a license is like everything else in California, very lengthy unnecessarily. So he'd been kind of working and hanging around the brokerage, but he's on a really good team. And the guy came out the gate. He's, I don't know, 10 or 12 closings in the first three months. You know, he's done five, six million dollars in sales. And uh, and it's just one of those things where it's like everybody around him on his team is hungry. And that's, he's hungry and he's closing. And I'm like, man, I know so many agents who got their license. And then like, that was it. Like, that was the most exciting thing was like, I got my license, but then now what? For like months, you know? So I think just being around heavy hitters is, is just going to rub off in a lot of ways. I think that's good. No, you're, you're right about that. And like the, the difference between being on a team and, and being at a brokerage, uh, especially like the big box, uh, what I call them brokerage types. Um, like we, we've got 50 agents, everybody on there is doing, everyone on our team is doing two or three deals a month. 
um, you know, even with COVID, in fact, like July, we're going to, we're going to do like 110 deals probably, which is the most we've ever done. Um, but if, if you're on a team, a good team, everybody around you is going to be doing well and willing to share. And when you get to these brokerages that have two, 300 agents, what you're going to find is 80 to 90% of them really don't do much business, but those are the ones that are typically more available in the office, hanging around, talking, shooting the shit, right? The guys that, that are doing 20, 30 million a year, making a good living, aren't typically around the office sharing and talking and, and all of that. So I think on the team, you know, it's going to be a smaller, uh, more productive and more willing to share group that you're around and, and you know, your environment just has such a dramatic impact on your success. Uh, yeah, that's, <clears throat> that's common with everything. I think like if you like, I, I'm struggling with that right now because I'm kind of, you know, between COVID and not having a day job, I'm like isolated. It's not, it's not good. Right. Cause then I'm like, eh, I'm the best. I'm the most successful person in the house. This is not a good, this is not, I'm the hardest working person in the house. This hey, is no a low barrier to entry. That's all right. There's, <laughs> um, but I find I, the comment made earlier about, you know, if you can, if you can get a real estate license, which is a barrier to entry of that is incredibly low. It's a couple hundred bucks. I'm going to go take the test next month. I've been in real estate for seven, five years and I should have done it long ago. Um, I don't really want to be an agent, but there's, there's, I, there's a lot of benefits that I've been missing out on. Um, <clears throat> but I look at it and I'm like, well, you know, I sold cars for a while. It's kind of the same thing, except the, the ceiling is way lower. Um, I think I should have got into real estate way, way, way sooner. But, uh, but I love that, right? Like just go get your license and, um, and stick with it. And it's like, people are buying houses, dude. Like just go capture some of that market. And if you're around the right culture and you're around the right people that drive you, it's, I don't want to say it's, it's hard to fail if you're trying. Yeah. No, like if you, if you spend like an one to two hours a day, generating leads, marketing, prospecting, and you do it for like three to six months, you'll, you'll make a six figure salary. Just most people won't do it. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of agents that don't do that well. And it's like, you can look at, I can look at them pretty quickly and be like, well, you're not, you're not trying. I mean, you're just, I don't, I don't tell you, they're just, you're just not trying that hard. You're, you're, what people do is they do the, uh, well, how much do I need? The, 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 the formula is completely backwards. Well, how much, do, how much are my bills? how much do I need to make to survive? Like that's the first, that's how I've had people do that in interviews with me before. Like I need to make this amount of money because that's what it costs me to live. It's like, you're, this is backwards. This is really backwards. You've set your ceiling and then you're going to set your effort to meet that ar arbitrary goal. So I think, you know, if you go there and you're like, look, I'll make whatever I make, but I'm going to put all the effort in. Well, then the ceiling just becomes infinite. Well, and that's, that's become one of our key evaluators in uh, any, any role we have that is sales-based or commission-based. Like if, 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 you know, me or the people on the team doing the interview don't get the good sense that they're very financially driven, you know, we, we usually know it's not going to, they're not going to be a good fit because there's, there's a certain amount of grit and just adversity you have to overcome in sales and, you know, 10 people might tell you no before one says yes. And, and if you're not driven by upward financial mobility, like you're, you're typically not going to make it through. It's just the way it is. Sales is a no business. It's a lot of no's and it's, it can be dreary and I, I, you know, I, I know it. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it gets, it can get old. It can be frustrating. Yada, 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 all these things. And then if you don't, um, you know, you got to like what you're selling a little bit. And uh, it, like you said, you gotta be, you gotta be financially motivated or you gotta be, sometimes people are just ego motivated. I just want to, I was going to say it's, it can just be the, e it can be it's like culture. So not to like, I don't ever talk about this side of recruiting, but like, so I, I was a recruiter for three years for the Marine Corps and the first, you know, recruiting sucks at first cause you're miserable and you hate, everyone tells you to go screw yourself and you're just an unhappy sack. Yeah, you know, it gets better as you get better at it. But the last year on recruiting, I took over a station that had a really, really rough spell, uh, just not a, not a good handover, right? And all of a sudden, 
within like three months, we were or probably five months. We were like station. We were in the running for station of the year. We ended up winning station of the year. We were the only station. I was an E5. I was a sergeant. Everyone on the team was a sergeant. We were the only all sergeant team in like nine states, our district. And we were the number one station. And really, the more I look back on it, the more I realize it was literally just we were a bunch of five angry underdog sergeants who were like, fuck you guys. We're going to beat you. Like we're going to eat your lunch. We're going to, we're going to ship somebody that you wanted to ship and we're going to cover your failure and we're not going to give you a chance to make it back. Like we're just going to, and it was like, it was literally just this culture of like the five of us who were like, we're better than you. and We know it. We're going to make sure you know it too. And, and it was the best team I've ever worked on. And we were still miserable half the time, but it was like just being around a group of people who's only like, like not only, but big motivation was just like, we want to crush everyone because everyone thinks we're going to fail. And it was, oh, it was great. It was like some of the best time of my time in the military. And the same, same group of people, for the most part, through the three years, the only real difference was all of a sudden we realized like, hey, no one thinks we're going to do this. Well, let's do it. And it was like just the mentality change in the office. Was, it was like a palpable difference in the air. It was crazy. So all about the team. Yeah, that, that us against the world kind of mentality is, is another really strong motivator if you can if you can harness it and you know in whatever you're doing really it's it's very very powerful it's tons of examples you know, business sports military yeah yeah right. sports yeah i like that it's uh i don't want to say ego but certainly comp- competition well, that's um, why the all blacks are good they wrote a book on it it's their culture yeah all right dan i got a question for you and this is not my question actually my my roommate john last night so he's a VA lender, and uh, and he was uh, yesterday. I told him who uh, who was on the podcast and and what you do, and he was like, "Oh, I got a question for him. I'm curious." And so I'm going to ask this, and then he's going to ask me what you said, and I'm going to tell him to listen to this. And then if he, so if John, if you don't listen to this, like screw you. But um, anyway, no. Anyway, so he basically what he was asking me is obviously as a as a real estate agent who has a very, very, very successful team, you get solicited by third party people all the time, right? Like I'm sure that lenders are always trying to get your business. Title companies are always trying to get your business. Like I would imagine that it is an excessive amount of people who are like, Ooh, they're doing well. Let's ride their coattails. Um, so I guess his question in a nutshell was like, what would, what would be a, like what makes people stand out that you potentially do business with when they approach you? Because obviously like real estate's all about networking. You know, so how would like a, a newer agent or a, or a, a lender or a title company or whatever, like how would someone approach you in a way that would actually stand out from the normal, like, Hey, you want to send us some leads? Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is that they've got to provide good service, you know, like the best service to, to our clients and to our agents. So they've, it's got to be something where we know if, if they, you know, if we use that lender, that title company, we're going to get closings done quicker, uh, more efficiently. Like we're going to get answers on nights and weekends from them so that we can write better offers. So like, you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff. And then that'll get their, their foot in the door and being aggressive with presenting us that. And then, um, you know, if, if they can prove themselves in that way, then, uh, sky's the limit and we'll look for ways to partner joint venture. You know, we, we had a, we're rolling out a new lender partner. We've got two or three that, that we have right now, but our newest one uh, was a lender that I've, I've known for a while and they were able to get a loan personally, get a loan done for me uh, earlier this year that no one else, like literally no one else could do. So on January 1 this year, like the VA limit, loan limits went away. There used to be this geographic uh, loan limit and they signed a law in 2019 that did away with it starting in 2020. Yeah. Well, most lenders had overlays, you know, their investors had overlays on top of this. So even though there was no limit from the VA on the amount they would guarantee, like most people were capping them at a million, million point five. Well, we had a lender that said they could do a uh, cash out refi on our primary home with no limit. And, um, you know, we, we ended up do, doing that deal 
with them and and ended up being like a two point six million dollar uh, <laughs> loan, hundred percent, you know, cash out uh, at like three and a eighth or something like that. So um, so so we took it all the way to a hundred percent, and you know, no one else could do it. No other lenders. We checked with like three or four. So, um, you know, just, just last month we launched a partnership with that lender and we'll be, you know, hopefully helping them and, and, and us, uh, grow. So really it's, it's getting shit done that other people can't do and, and getting it done quicker and, and being more responsive. Um, seems simple, right? Like deliver. Yeah. yeah. Like deliver. <laughs> I mean, I, I do this with contractors all the time. The scale is not the same as yours, but the, idea is the same. It's like, you want a job for me? Cause I do a bunch of flips, right? So or a bunch of rehabs and I work with a bunch of people. So you want a job here? Here's something. Now let me watch you how you do it. Right. If you're, if, if you're, look, if you're a pain to work with and you got one job, like the one, it's like, dude, I'll, I'll test you out on a, on a deal. Sure. No problem. I'll test you out. And if you do really good work, it's like, I'll call you all the time. And if you're hard to manage or you don't do what you're say, say you're going to do, or you're, you know, whatever, right. It's not favorable beat it. And so, um, it sounds like you have enough work that you can give a lot of people a shot. At least if they come at you with a good, with a good pitch, right? Like, Hey, look, let me, like, let me give, give me a shot. Okay. Here's your shot. And then, you know, Oh, you screwed it up. See ya. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's not like, uh, my guess is you're not playing the perfect hundred percent loyalty game. Like, Oh, I have this one person and I use them no matter what. And and there's no room for anybody else. If you have a lot of work, it's like, well, we can, we can spread out the love a little bit and we can test people to make sure that they're going to deliver to our clients the quality of, you know, value that we expect. Yeah, no, we, we've, we have two lenders that we've been working with for like seven years that are both amazing, but we've, you know, we've, we're doing a hundred deals a month now. We've got, we, we can, we can have, you know, three or four total at least. So, yeah, okay. you know, we've, we've got another lender that, uh, that, that we refer business to and, and just, he's been an investor in almost every single one of our, our condo projects. So like we're typically raising four to 500 K sometimes more of equity per, per deal. And almost every deal that we're in, like him and his group come in for like a hundred K. So like the, the end buyer leads that we get on these condo deals, you know, we, we push over to him. So there's, there's a ton of different ways to, to do it formally and informally. And, yeah. You know, just got to offer, uh, offer value and, 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 and deliver and be timely and, and communicate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, if you're someone in the service industry, like a third party, like you got to realize too, that like a good agent and a good team is, is looking for things that make them to make them unique and make them a better uh, in-house for their clientele. So I have a friend in uh, Arkansas that I grew up with who is when I, they just, they had just inked this deal when I was in town, but basically what he started doing is there's this landscaping company, some kids who are up and coming and what they were their their like value add to him was like, Hey, look, we're going to, every single house you sell, will come in and landscape for free. Like the week you, the week after you close, like just tell, like, it's just a package you're offering. Like, Hey, when you close with me, you're going to get your entire house, like landscaped and pretty like the week after you move in and trash the yard or whatever. And, uh, you know, and, and it's helped grow their business, obviously, because people will stay with them in some of these nicer agent or nicer areas. But it's just like a cool, so it's like a win-win. It's like, hey, they might get business from doing this for free, but you get to offer something unique to your uh, buyer, which, I mean, that's a cool service. I I would personally love if someone mowed my grass after I, you know, unload a moving truck and I don't want to mow my grass, so... Yeah, that's that's a great deal. I mean, it's not it doesn't cost that much, right? Just yeah. do it once. Like, yes, yeah, so there's all yeah. kinds of unique propositions out there. Yeah, but your friends, Dave, your friends' question about like how do you get a shot? I think, especially if you're asking people, how do I say it? That have some scale to them. It's like I think there's a lot of opportunities for people to get a shot. I think the problem is uh, one. A lot of times they're just too scared to ask. Right. And then sometimes, uh, or a lot of times they just don't deliver when they, they want the easy business, not, uh, you know, but the big businesses, like the bigger somebody is, the more you got to deliver. Um, you, the, I mean, you just have to deliver. And so I think, uh, it requires, well, you got to step up. So yeah, you can call this guy and get a, get a shot, but you gotta, getting the shot is, the, is just the, 
the foot in the door, right? You got to like swing that fucking door open now. And <laughs> I think, uh, you know, another good way is if, if you bring them a lead, like if you bring an agent, like a referral, um, that's, that's yeah. a really like easy way to, to get started. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Here's some money. Like here's a, here's basically a done deal. The pre-approved or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I, I recommend that to a lot of people like, dude, if you want to work with a house flipper, find a house that's worth flipping and talk to them. If you want, like, if you can, not that you have to do it, but like, if you can find a way to do that. So the first, I got to partner with a super successful uh, house flipper in Oahu and follow him along on a deal because I found something that had potential and was like, Hey, you want this deal? I'm like, you know, I didn't expect anything out of it except getting to spend time with the guy. And I more than got that. And I think people, they're, they're, people don't play the long game. So they think, oh, I've got this, you know, I, I don't like what, well, well, I could make $5,000 wholesaling in this house. Yeah. Okay. And you could make hundreds of thousands of dollars if you learn how to flip from this guy who makes millions. Like, I don't know. People never play the long game. It infuriates me. <laughs> What's up, military millionaires? I have not done a good enough job talking about syndication opportunities. So for those of you who don't know, I have been investing in some apartment complexes over the years, as, long as, as well as a bunch of other stuff. But I just have never really mentioned it on the podcast. So I apologize for making that hard to find. Look, if you are an accredited or sophisticated investor or unsure and would just like to talk, Go ahead and go over to the investor from militarymillionaire.com slash investor slash and just fill out the little form. Let's jump on a call and talk. I'd love to hear how we can help each other out. So some of the opportunities that we provide can be anything from really big cash flow advan- uh, opportunities to big equity plays. We do. I, I even do some private lending type stuff, but lots of different opportunities out there to invest. And I just want to make sure that you guys understand those are out there. So if you're interested in syndications or private money, you know, I'd love to jump on a call with you. There are ways that we can help you out. You can help me out. We can help everybody out. Win, 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 win situation. Our most recent deal was 146 units, uh, 7% preferred return and uh, projected 18% plus return on investment. But we've done better. We've done not quite as good with more equity play, like lots of different opportunities, right? And if you want to be, there's a separate email list that I have, which I send those deals to. And if you want to be on that list, then let's schedule a call and jump on it because we need to know each other. If I'm going to be sending you information on these opportunities, and I would hate for you to miss out on it just because of my ugly mug, not telling you. So if that sounds interesting, let me know if that does not sound interesting. Enjoy the show right now. All right. So Dan, what's, what's next? I mean, you've got, uh, everything accomplished, uh, you know, a billion dollars in real estate sold a book book written and sold well coaching uh endurance sports like i don't know what's 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 next on the horizon for you and the team yeah well we've we've got a lot of big goals second half of the year uh we're i think we're at about 100 units in the pipeline on our development most of those will be like hitting the market q4 q1 q2 going into next year but uh we're, we're probably looking to still acquire uh, three or four more projects, new ones, by, uh, you know, uh, between now and, and the end of the year. So continuing to scale our development business, um, we're going to continue to grow our team. Our, our you know, goal is to hit a thousand transactions this year. We're probably on pace for about 900 or so right now. So we got to pick it up a little in the second half, um, you know, recruit some more people, maybe, maybe, ex, you know, expand geography a little bit. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we're continuing to grow our coaching business and uh, we just announced our Hyperfast 2020 event. So this will be the third year we've done it. It's going to be October 13th and 14th in Arlington, Virginia, right out, you know, about five minutes from DCA, DCA airport. So really easy to get to, uh, last, last year we had Ryan Serhant speak the year before we had Grant Cardone and Billy Jean. So, uh, this year lineup's going to be just as amazing. So you can, uh, get tickets, hey. uh, for that. Uh, Hey Dan, what's your, uh, yeah, you hire yeah. a vet photographer for that? What's your budget on that? 
We can, yeah. We we uh, we need multiple photographers and videographers, probably. So we we have our own in-house team, but we have to, for that event we have to supplement. So it's definitely a wait possibility. For the stand, wait for the shameless plug. It's coming. I know. A, <laughs> I know. A, I know an event photographer that can do what nobody else can do. <laughs> do you? I do, yeah. but he's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and now I know you can afford it. <laughs> well, there's there's a lot of a lot of value at, at, at being at this event as a as a photographer. So you know, just being there is going to get your name out. Yeah, you're know, trying to become an agent. Three, four, right? five hundred people. <laughs> so I'll, I'll 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 put that out there as well. <laughs> I would I would love to meet Ryan. I, I think that's I think that's cool. I like his YouTube channel, and obviously everyone knows Grant. But I think I think it would be. I mean, is Ryan? I know he's up there. Is he the number one agent in the country as far as? Like, no, he, not he. No? He he was. Um, I don't know. I think he hit number two a couple of years ago. Um, this this year he wasn't in the rankings, so hmm. I don't. You know, the you have to submit for them. And, um, I, I think 2019 was a down year for New York. And I, I think he had like three or four years in the top five and they, a, a couple things happened, you know, one, it was a down year for New York. And then two, they kind of changed how they, how they did it. And they, they had more categories. So it was, it was a little weird comparing this year to like previous years, but, um, you know, my, my guess is between that and the down year and, and being ranked in the top, you know, yeah. five, as high as number two, I think, for several years, um, you know, he probably didn't want to come in at number 10 or 11 or, or whatever it would have been. I don't I don't know what it would have been. So I'm, I'm guessing they just didn't submit their numbers for some reason. Yeah, maybe he just but, made so um, much money. But he's – he's, yeah, he's doing – He's selling, you know, four or five. He's done, I think, as high as seven hundred, eight hundred million um, a year with him and his team. And he's he's got the show and and uh, you know the social media and um, yeah, tons of followers and, and all sorts of stuff. So I mean, he's he's doing really well. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, it's just cool for me to like see like tours of like multi-million dollar penthouses in new york that's really i'm like oh i like this house let me take a look at this crazy place <laughs> like yeah he was he was a uh, very very dynamic entertaining um pro- probably a little like softer gentler more more friendly than than grant i think uh <laughs> isn't everybody <laughs> i probably personally enjoyed uh <laughs> you know, that part of Grant more than, than most people did. And, and, yeah. uh, I, I, I kind of liked it. It's just like, no, no bullshit. Just here's, here's how it is. And, you know, the man, the man knows how to break through and get attention no matter what is going on in the world. So you got to give him that for sure. Yeah. That's good. Man. David, let's fly out. Let's fly out and go to this event. I'm going to drive there. I'm going to go to it. I, uh, I do love DC and the area and I need to spend yeah. more time there. Yeah. Okay. Let's lock it in. We're done. We're coming. Good. October 13th, 14th. And, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give all your listeners 50% off as well. So if, if, they, go to, if they go to, uh, hyperfast 2020.com use, use the code, uh, what should we do? M- MM50, Military Millionaire 50. So use the code MM50 uh, at, at checkout at hyperfast2020.com. And Look at that. And I'll be there. I'll bring my camera. And so I have a new business plan. I have a new business plan that I've been talking to Dave about my event photography because I'm getting real good at it. I'm getting some paid clients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go there. I'm going to shoot that event. And then I'm not going to give you the pictures. And they're going to be incredible. And then I'm going to extort <laughs> you for money on the back end <laughs> so you can have them. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right. What, 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 uh, do you do videography as well, or, or, yeah. or photo- just photography, or what's, what's uh, a little bit of videography? Here? Yeah, okay. I'll do, I'm gonna, I'll, I do both a little bit. He Mostly just, photography. He's so uh, modest. He just launched uh, like 12 video series for Bigger Pockets. He did as his first like legit project. So um, he does he does some good stuff with the camera. Uh, his, oh, wow. his his photo blogs have always been a highlight for me with events. So 
Um, mainly because I get like all kinds of pictures of me that I was too drunk to know were taken and they end up online. I'm like, oh, thanks. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty good stuff. So um, were, were you uh, working with uh, like David Green and Brandon Turner and all those guys on that? Uh, I no, because what it was, the, the project did for BP is like, uh, it, it's, uh, following around real estate investors that were basically local to me. Cause it was a, it, this is basically a pilot, a 12 episode pilot. Um, we're going to expand on it now. Actually, I think we're going to go to DC and do six, six or eight episodes, um, in the next month or two. Um, but no, it wasn't with Brandon or cause they don't do the, you know, Brandon nowadays, he just, he does pumps out content and David, I don't know what he does. Uh, uh, he pumps out content too, but I don't think that they're, they're not running the production side. So I don't deal with them that much. I I've met him a few times, but we didn't talk on this. This was done with the uh, production side of BP. Um, but anyways, yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm being selfish, but the idea is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get my license. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm other than sell my own flips. Um, uh, but I'd like to learn more. Uh, we, my partner already has a broker in charge. He doesn't do anything with it. So I was thinking about ways to maybe, you know, move into that space. So this is all, this is all kind of coalescing and I love conferences. I love events. And, uh, so big overlap and, and for me there. So yeah, I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'd love to go. <laughs> I would awesome. love to go well, as well. Maybe, and- uh, when, when you're out, let's, uh, or, or if you're going to be in DC, uh, in a month or so, maybe we can shoot some stuff at our, some of our condo projects. And I don't know what your series is about, but, um, uh, yeah, I got a, I got a bunch of different little things going on, but yeah, um, I'll, uh, I'll make sure I hit you up. I, do you know, uh, my buddy Russell Brazil out there? Yeah. I, well, I don't, I, I see. Yeah. I think we've connected on social media a few times. He's horrible on social media, so. but, he's, but he's loud. <laughs> he's obnoxious, but he's loud. Uh, but yeah, uh, he's, he's a buddy of mine, so I, and I love DC. So yeah, I'd uh, love to link up when I'm out there. Right on. I will, uh, I can't make any promises. I'm going to be up front. I want to oh, attend, but I still tough. have this whole active duty thing that right now I'm not even allowed to go more than 30 miles from my house. So <laughs> it's like, eh. You got to decide what's important. You got to decide what's the most important. Real estate. Or the brig. Or we'll just we'll just we'll just give you like some some glasses with a with with like a I don't know some fake mustache or something <laughs> mustache yeah <laughs> yeah my unit will be like where's yeah. Dave I don't know where Dave is oh Dave he's been gone for like three days don't worry about it he's he's cool why is he why is he not at work ah you know he said something about the flu he said he coughed it was fourteen days of quarantine. Uh, no, we'll see. I, I, I really, I have two or three different things that time of year that I'm really hoping I work out. And right now it's like, everything's just sitting in the, in the leave request box, like pending. So it's like, oh, come on guys, you're putting my life on hold. But all right, Dan, if an E1 or an E2, 18, 19 year old is to walk up to you asking for advice in life and you only had a few minutes, what would you tell them? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I would tell them to, to get a mentor or, or, or get a bunch of indirect mentors. So, you know, find someone who's doing it really, really well, uh, or, or start reading a lot of books, like consuming a lot of content. Like there's, there's a lot of great information out there about how to get started in real estate, whether as an agent or investor. And, you know, you can, get books, uh, get on YouTube, get on like bigger pockets. There's, there's all these things out there that are just very, very accessible and, um, and, and, and easy to, to get and, you know, study that stuff, but, but don't study it too long if you know what I'm saying. So like if you, if you, if all you do is like steady, 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 and you never take action, it, it, you know, you might as well not have consumed any of the content. So so, you know, study what's worked and then go out and do it and, and, and be consistent. You know, like I was saying earlier on the show, uh, if you're going to give up before three months, six months, it's not going to work, right, uh, in anything. But, you know, real estate is just one of these golden opportunities where if, if, you, if you stick with it for six months, you'll have success. And if you keep sticking with it, 
you can you can really snowball it into something that's you know beyond what you really ever would have thought i never would have imagined you know six or seven years ago that i would be where i am today but it's really none of it's rocket science i mean shoot people from the military can take over i mean we're all supposed to be idiots right that's what they say (laughs) except you know for the fact that you were like a nuclear sub guy so probably not (laughs) yeah I, i love your advice because it's so um well it's just so tried and true right like go learn about this and then go stick your you know body around other people who are doing it it sounds so simple but you know i think back to when i was a 20 year old in the army and it's like that sounds simple and yet well, i didn't read any books you know i didn't read anything i didn't consume any content now there was no there wasn't like the internet wasn't what, what it is today either um i mean but libraries still existed right it's a lousy excuse but now you can you can literally google and go to bigger pockets and like get immersed and start meeting people immediately or whatever you know, military millionaire Facebook group, which is exploding right now. Um, but I mean, it really is that simple. Like just go there and be part of the life that you want to be part of. And then you immerse yourself and it becomes like osmosis. You can't fail. It's like, if you're out of shape and you want to get in shape, the best thing you could possibly do is just start hanging out with all your friends who are in shape. Like just, you are going to get in shape because they're going to call you nasty. They're going to slap junk food out of your hand. They're going to chastise you. They're going to drag you to the gym when you're not in the mood. They're going to, but like over time, you're, you're going to look in the mirror. Your and go, like me. Yeah. You're, you know, you're, but you're If you get around people who are already doing what you want to do and you just stay around them, you're going to succeed. Yeah. It's gotta be hard to go to a brokerage every day with a bunch of people who are selling houses. And then you're sitting there like, let me try. It's hard to be like, Oh, you you sold none. Like that's a really hard, (laughs) you gotta be, you're that's, you're in the wrong biz for sure. If you go to spend six months at a a brokerage around other brokers and you trying to learn and you're trying and then you sell none, something's up. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I, I, that's part of what I like about our, our, the culture of, of the, the team we've built, like people that aren't producing well, you know, after a while they, they don't, they don't feel comfortable. <laughs> and they're, they're, you know, so, it usually works, it usually works its way. Yeah. Yeah. Say you, don't, you don't have to fire people. They just quit. Perfect. <laughs> I need a, I need a business plan like that. <laughs> well, and that's, you know, this is another thing I love about Cardone is, is people always, people a lot of times get afraid of, of, turnover but and and of course you wouldn't want like excessive amounts of turnover but you you definitely need some and like look at the new england patriots like the the last time they won the super bowl i forget when it was like two years ago i think uh they had the highest turnover among players and coaches uh going into that season and um you know the the key takeaway is up up until this year you know you could always count on uh, Belichick being there, Brady being there, and that was about it. And uh, everyone else would uh, kind of rotate in, you know, maybe do five years, ten years, but it would, there, were, there was turnover. And, like, we've got an amazing group of, of core people that, that, that we, you know, love, and some of them have been with us now for, like, eight years. Um, but there's, there's always, you know, some level of turnover and that's bringing in like new blood, uh, fresh ideas, new energy, right? So, you know, as, as you build out your team and, and you know, in investing or in a brokerage, whatever it is, like, you, know, you definitely need to value and treasure the uh, key players that have been with you for a while, but you also have to have the attitude of like, there's no sacred cows and, uh, you know, yeah. I'm the only one that stays no matter what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel you. All right. So we mentioned indirect mentors. So now I'm going to ask what is one resource, a uh, book course, website, whatever that uh, you would recommend to anybody looking to become a successful real estate agent. And I'm going to give you a chance to self-plug, so not yet. Sure. Um, 
I doubt that you would do that. I'm just giving you our time. No, I, um, I, I would, I would study Tony Robbins. Um, you know, maybe go to one of his events if, if, and when they <laughs> happen again in person, he, he just did this. What are, like, what are these this, events you speak of? Yeah. Well, I, I think he'll, he'll have them in Florida by the, at least in Q4 for sure. But, um, he just did like a four or five day online one. I think that was, I think it was free or at some level was free. Um, but that, you know, we, we, Carrie and I did that in 2015, Unleash the Power Within. And um, I think you can do that, like, it's like a four-day event. You know, Tony speaks for two of those days. Um, it's basically like a long weekend, so it's not, it's not hard to get to and do. And I think tickets may have been as low as like a hundred bucks or 200 bucks. I'm, I'm not sure what the lowest price one was. There's, you know, different levels, but uh, definitely accessible, I think to, to anyone. And, uh, you know, something like that, I think can really impact your mindset and, and how do you look at things, which really is the number one determiner in this kind of success you'll have not just in business, but, but like fitness relationships, like all parts of life. Awesome. I appreciate that. That was a different answer than most. And I've never heard anything but incredible stuff about Tony Robbins events. All right. I have, I have a buddy who signed up for the platinum, his platinum. Yeah. Platinum. My, my, Car Carrie and I did that after we, yeah, we went to UPW, uh, the, you know, the kind of the, the, first level of uh, event and we ended up you know spending about 200 grand to be platinum partners and, and travel around with him and, and go to like all his events and smaller group ones for lasted for about a year yeah i had a buddy who did that i don't think he got as much out of it because well uh he spent inheritance money to do it he didn't like have a business he thought maybe if i throw the money at this then the world will the universe will reward me with income rather than i don't there was no i don't know that well you can tell me but it doesn't seem like there's a there's an experience return and maybe some good networking but if, if you didn't have a business if you just threw like that was your, like his last money kind of um i don't think he got that much out of it uh but i think that was the wrong reason to go um if you have a business, i think it, it, if you have a business it can it can definitely in what you learn in business mastery can it can help you grow it make it better make it more efficient you know, it can also spark the idea behind one, I, I believe. Um, I'm going to mess up the name. Mark, uh, the, the, the CEO of sales, Salesforce. Um, Benioff? Yeah, Benioff, Mark Benioff. He apparently uh, at Unleash the Power Within, like walked up to Tony and said, I'm going to start this company called Salesforce. And oh, wow. He did it. So he's winning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you and and there definitely were people in Platinum Partners that like had successful businesses and used that money to 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 you know pay for it and, and, and lever it up even more or grow it even more. But then there, there were also people that you know were using money they got from inheritance or parents or whatever to, to do it as well. And um, I'm, I'm sure it probably impacted them in some way, shape or form. But I, I, you know, I think when you're spending money that you, you earn versus money that was, was given to you, like I think the, the former, you know, is, is going to lead to more impactful results because you're, more committed to it like if, if i go out and pay for a trainer for myself like i'm gonna like show up and and work really hard but if if i pay like you know when i pay a swim coach to come over and train my five-year-old son like it's not his money right so sometimes i have to uh for him it's a chore yeah, yeah sometimes it is he loves like swimming but you know, sometimes he doesn't want to do the lesson. So I have to like sit there and, you know, give him some encouragement. <laughs> yeah. 
No, I mean, that makes sense, right? It's, it's just the old skin in the game concept. Like if someone pays for something, you know, it, it is, it's, it's for the same, the same exact reason that the mastermind we host, while super affordable, is not free. It's because I was a part of mastermind groups that were free and they never made it past the first meeting. In fact, some of them didn't even make it to the first meeting. And then I paid for one and a year later, it's gone incredible. And if nothing else, we've added to it. And so I was like, oh man, is this really the secret sauce? So I paid for another one and it, it totally is. It's just having a little bit of skin in the game so that there's something to lose and holy crap, all the difference. So I think that's, I think that's cool. Um, all right. So where can people get a hold of you? Yeah. So if, if you want to learn more about our coaching program, you can go to hyperfastagent.com. My social media handle is the Dan Lesniak. So it's just the plus my name. And, and I believe that works for uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube and LinkedIn. And then uh, I'm also on TikTok now too. So I've been, I've been doing TikTok. Hey, so me too. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun platform waste we'll, we'll of see. time <laughs> we'll see how um well they said that about instagram five years ago oh no i just mean i waste time on it oh <laughs> uh, yeah it's, it's much more fun than like the typical facebook yeah like yeah it's it's cool political arguments now or whatever uh so <laughs> and, and what I, side I, are you on what side are, I, are you on so I know if you're a friend or a foe? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to cut this right now. <laughs> oh, man. And on that note, no. Uh, oh, man. Hey, but Dan, seriously, thanks for joining us. I know you are incredibly busy. Uh, I mean, selling 100 homes, working a team, everything else you're doing is is not – like that is not the lifestyle of somebody who has all the free time in the world. So I, I mean, and, and amongst all of that, you're training for an Ironman, which I know is easily over 15 hours a week. So I know you're busy and I really, really, really appreciate that. We, you know, you guys were willing to take some time out of your day to come and talk to us about this. And I've got like a full page of notes on building the brokerage and stuff. So super, super cool advice that I know a ton of people in this audience are going to really enjoy. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah. I, I had a great time. Hope to connect with uh, more of your listeners on, on our show or, or uh, social media event. or anywhere else. One last, one last thing I'll mention besides the event, October 13th and 14th. If you want to download a uh, hundred tips from my, my book, uh, the hyper local hyper fast real estate agent, uh, you can go to hyperfasttips.com and, uh, you can download a hundred real estate agent strategies and tips and things I actually used in my first year. So that's hyperfasttips.com. I'm gonna go download that. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode about my journey from military to millionaire. If you liked it, be sure to visit from military to slash podcast to subscribe to future podcasts. While you're there, we'd love for you to rate the show, give us a review on iTunes. Now get out there and take action.